I'm a little iffy with USHL main camps. It could be a great opportunity, but it could also be a big money grab. This is where you see the mass invites. You see 200 players at camps. The USHL is by far the league to go to. So because of this, everybody wants to play in this league. It's so hard to make the USHL, but I do want to make it a point to say that it's not impossible. What's going on guys? This is Brayden from Advancement Hockey Advising here. Today, we'll be talking everything regarding the USHL and what the entire process is like when it comes to making that league. Now, we all know that when it comes to playing NCAA D1 hockey and getting recruited there, the USHL is by far the league to go to. It's the best league when it comes to caliber and to have NCAA D1 uh, exposure and recruitment. So because of this, everybody wants to play in this league. The caliber is top notch. And because of that, it's that much harder to make this league. It's so hard to make the USHL. Not impossible, we'll talk about it in this video how to make it and what it takes, but the caliber is so high that you have to be an extremely, extremely good hockey player that performs at every single event and camp to be able to make this league. But I do wanna make it a point to say that it's not impossible. Players make it every single year in the USHL. It is possible, but this video, I have to be realistic and tell you guys that it's hard to make, but I wanna show you guys step-by-step step what the process of making the USHL is, so what the trial process is like, what you kind of need to, to set yourself up what's the best path to get there and realistically what it takes to actually make the USHL. Now, before we dive into all of that, as always, what would an AHA video be without me asking you to absolutely destroy that like button? And if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video moving forward. If you do all of that, I promise at the end of the video, you'll be rewarded with a picture of a baby penguin. All right, so let's talk about the whole process when it comes to getting signed in the USHL. Four main things that I wanna to touch on here. Tenders, drafts, main camps, and training camps, and then moving forward from there. So let's start with tenders. So unlike other leagues where tenders don't really mean anything, tenders are are like top tier when it comes to the USHL. If a team signs a tender with you, you're at least guaranteed to actually start the season with them. So they really, you know, value their tenders. Each team only has two tenders that they can dish out. And if they dish out a tender, so if a player uh, signs a tender with a team, the team gives up their first round draft pick. If they, they sign their second tender with a team, the team gives up their second round draft pick. So as you can see, the tenders are very valuable and the teams don't use them wisely. They only have two. So it, it's really important that they don't just hash out tenders like, uh, uh, like anything you know so they they really you know use them wisely and they're only going to use them on the the most elite players that they know are going to be um you know their top forward or their top goalie or top defenseman one of the top players on their team in the future okay so tenders that's where it's at for the ushl all right, so following tenders, we have the draft. So the draft happens sometime in May for the USHL, so it's pretty early on. There's two phases to the draft. So phase one, basically, is where it's all U17 players. So any player that's under 17 years old, they're eligible for this draft here. For moving forward here, so the phase two, this is for any other player that didn't get drafted before. So the phase two happens after the phase one. So any player that didn't get drafted by a USHL team before, or that's eligible uh, all over the world, basically, for, for the phase two and teams can have up to 45 uh, phase two draft picks. Again, the biggest difference between a drafted player and a tendered player is that a tendered player is guaranteed to at least start the season with the USHL team, whereas drafted, yes, it means a team's interested in you, but it really doesn't mean all that much, okay? You can get drafted and cut the next day. So something to keep in mind when it comes to the difference, it does help, but it doesn't mean that much when you get drafted. It just means you'll get invited to main camp and then you shoot your shot to make the USHL team moving forward. All right, so moving on to main camps here. So I'm a little iffy with USHL main camps. It could be a great opportunity, but it could also be a big money grab. This is where you see the mass invites. You see 200 players at camps, $400 a pop per player. You know, again, I'm not saying anything on this. It's their way of making money before the season because USHL is free, but it is a way for them to make money. You have to remember that. So unless you truly think that you can make the USHL, even though it's invite only, pretty much every player gets these invites. If it's invite only, you still have to think critically like, hey, do I legit have a shot of making this team and realize that it's the best junior A league in the US and the best junior A league to move on players since AA D1. So unless you truly think after, let's say you got drafted or you're tendered that you actually have a shot of making this team, if you didn't get drafted or anything like that, I'd say make sure you think critically before choosing to go because it can be, uh, you know, a wasted opportunity where you could have went to like the NA camp or an NCDC camp where you had a more realistic shot, okay? So something to keep in mind and use your money and time wisely when it comes to this. That being said, main camps to be 
be a great opportunity to move players on to the following phase, which is the training camp. On that note though, before I talk about the training camps, main camps usually have about 200 players. They go through about two to three rounds of cuts and then they move, they really trim their roster down and they move on players to the training camp. So the training camp is basically where, you know, the, the preseason kind of starts. And this is the legit camp where they really dial down what their roster is going to be. Okay. This is where by September 1st, they have to be down to a 30 man roster. By September 20th, they have to be down to a 25 man roster. Exhibition games have been playing then. So players really playing games. The coaching staff evaluates very critically these players to see who they're going to pick. And then by September 25th, the season begins. And then moving forward from there, like the, the camp is never really done. If you think about it, moving forward from there, once they're down to their 25 man roster, they're going to make changes. They're going to cut certain guys. They're going to acquire other guys throughout the season. You know, they're going to trade players and all that stuff until the trade deadline that's much further out. But even after you make that 25 man roster, you can still get cut halfway through the season. So it's really a, a really big process when you think it starts from like 200 or so players and really chops down all the way to that many players. And these players are, are some of the best in the business. You know, it's, a, it's the top league and you know, you got the best players coming here. So it's really, really cutthroat to make, um, you know, these USHL teams. But again, I don't want to discourage you guys. It is possible players make it every year. It's just me showing you the reality here as to how, you know, it can be a little bit predatory. And if you're not even thinking about the predatory part of just money grabs and all that stuff, despite that, if you go to a camp and you think you have a legit shot, it's still very difficult to make. That's just the reality of the USHL. But again, it's still possible. If you think you have a go good opportunity, go for it and really train your heart out to make that team. Now let's talk about how most players actually make the USHL. It's not as clear cut as just going to a camp, trying to make the team and all that stuff. Most players, you know, have been scouted way beforehand, way before the camps and even way before the draft and stuff. That's why you see some players getting tendered, drafted and all that stuff because they got scouted before. Typically how it goes down most of the time, an NCAA D1 coach has been tracking a, a young player for a long time. They think they're ready to commit. They commit the player or they're really interested in tracking the player moving forward. Several schools that say are interested. They call the USAHL team that deal, they deal with the most, that they know best, and they say, hey, I have this player here, he's really good, we committed him, or we're planning on committing him moving forward. I want him to come develop with you guys for this particular season. You should tender or you should draft this player. That's typically how it goes down. Next step, either the coach blindly agrees, and, or the USAHL scout or coach says, you know what, yeah, we're gonna draft him, or we're gonna come watch him, and we'll think about tendering him. They kinda go through that process. And then afterwards, the player typically goes to a practice or two with, uh, um, the USHL team. So sometime in March, it could be a bit earlier, a bit later, you know, before the draft, they'll go practice with the team. They'll get some exposure with the team or one of the scouts, like the head scout or something, will go watch a player play a couple games, evaluate the player and determine if they're worth being drafted or not or tendered or not. So that, 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 at that point, they kind of make the decision. But usually it starts from an NCAA D1 coach or, you know, a, a scout of some sort or an advisor that they really trust or another coach that they really trust calling them about a certain player. That's how the ball kind of gets rolling. It's kind of like the back doorway in and how they originally get seen to get tendered, drafted, or then invited to camp or something around those lines. Now, that's not to say that a player can just show up to camp randomly, undrafted, untendered, anything like that, and not make the team. It's actually possible. It's just much rarer. Usually you just see players go through this path instead where a coach, a scout, or something promotes them. They skate with the team. They get seen a lot. They get tendered or drafted and then so on, move on to, to the USHL team if they're good enough to make it. But it, it is completely possible just to show up to camp. It just must much less likely and much rarer. All right, so a quick recap here about the USHL and how to make it. So overall, most of us know that the USHL is the best junior league to go to by far when it comes to wanting to play NCAA D1 hockey and developing for it. Generally, the goal is to get tendered or drafted before a USHL main camp starts. And then from there, the best way usually to get tendered or drafted is for an NCAA D1 coach or a head scout or someone to see you to say, hey, you should actually go to these skates, go to skates with team or get scouted more, all that stuff. And from there, it's easier to get drafted or tendered by a USHL team. All right, guys, that is it for the video. Hopefully you got some value out of it and that you have a better idea as to how the whole USHL trial process and how the whole league works all together. If you did like this video and if you stuck around to the end here as promised because you're loyal subscribers and followers and you destroyed that like button here's a picture of the baby penguin Aww. super cute right super worth it to stay to the end but again guys without further ado thank you so much for watching this video we really appreciate it we'll catch up on that next one